Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Welcome to Masters of Business. My name is Jeremy Carter, and I'm here to talk today about one of my favorite topics, inspired leadership, the art and science of creating engaged and inspired teams. And if you want to become a master of business, then being an inspiring leader is a skill that you definitely need to master. Today, we'll be talking about five very key elements when it comes to leadership. Firstly, what does it take to be an inspiring leader? We'll look at some real world examples of leaders who've been able to change the world. We'll then move on to understanding your five bases of social power as a leader, the things that allow you to achieve influence through other people. We'll talk about five very important elements of persuasion. How do we persuade and how do we allow others to move along to our point of view? And we'll also be talking about five very significant gaps in the marketplace between what leaders are delivering today and what people are really looking for. So before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about learning. You see, it's very easy to sit there and just listen. But statistics prove, and science has shown, that if you sit here and just listen to this presentation, your attention one week from now will only be 15 to 20 percent. If you get a pencil and you take some notes during the presentation, retention is almost going to double to 35 to 40 percent. But successful people understand it's not about collecting information, it's about acting on information. So what I'd like you to do is, as we go through today's presentation, think about the action items. What is it that you can apply to make yourself a better leader? And most importantly, act on this within 24 hours. If you act on the information, your retention will climb to over 70%. So let's start with our first question today. Why does leadership really matter? Well, I put it to you, without leadership, the rest really doesn't matter at all. You might have the best products in the world, but without the right leaders, you won't have the right team, you won't have the engagement. You see, lack of leadership causes companies to fail, causes communities to fail, and causes countries to fail. What we might do is we'll start by looking at some real-world statistics. And this is a study uh, on Australian employee engagement. It was done by Gallup in 2012, and it looked at Australian employees and said, how engaged are these people in the workplace? We can see the green segment, 24%. So less than one in four employees are actively engaged in their roles. Now, what does engaged mean? Engaged means they're not just there watching the clock. It means that they will apply discretionary effort over and above what it is they've been hired to do. In terms of not engaged, we have 60%. So that is six out of every 10 Australian employees are not prepared to go the extra mile. They do what they're paid for. You have their heads. You have their bodies. These are the people who show up at 8.30 in the morning and leave at 5.01 in the afternoon and do what's asked of them, but very little else. And then we have, top left corner, actively disengaged. So 16% of Australian employees are actively disengaged. So what does actively disengaged mean? What it really means is that they're doing their best to fight what's going on in the organisation. Would you like to know what it is that causes disengagement? Time and again, when I speak to company owners about engagement and we talk about actively disengaged people, and I ask them, what do you think needs to happen? And they say, well, you obviously need to get rid of these people out of the company. And I ask a question. Were they actively disengaged when they came into the company? And the answer is invariably no. You see, something happened to them along the way. There are three very key drivers of disengagement. The first is lack of growth. The employee feels like they've stalled in their current role. The second, they dislike their job. And the third is they don't value their manager. So very often this comes down to relationships and with actively disengaged employees, this is your opportunity as a leader to step up and have a difficult conversation. You see, as a leader, the most difficult conversations deliver the best results. How do you know when something's going to be a difficult conversation? Well, I think when your stomach starts rumbling, 
when you know it's something that you'd rather put off until later, in fact, it's the last thing you want to do, that's a sign that as a leader you need to step up and have that difficult conversation. And very often what you'll find is through having this conversation, we can achieve an outcome. And the great outcome here is you can either shift these disengaged employees back to being fully engaged, or sometimes they may choose to leave your organisation. However, one of the things that's really important as a leader is not for you to tolerate the situation. Because as a leader, what you tolerate, you deserve. If you tolerate it, you send the message that it's OK, and it's going to happen time and time again. Employee engagement invariably comes down to the levels of leadership within the company. The strength of the relationships that have been built between the employees and also the leaders, and the ability of the leaders to recognize the strengths of every person within the organization and to really challenge them to bring out their best. So what are the drivers that lack of engagement can create within the organization? Studies have shown that high employee engagement drives customer satisfaction. A study by Harter in 2009 showed that customer satisfaction climbed 12% in the top quartile versus the bottom quartile. What does this mean? This is, means that employees really care about their roles and they take the time to look after the customers. When customers are satisfied, they come back and do business time and time again. And more importantly, they tell other people about your company. So customer satisfaction is a great start. High employee engagement also lowers absenteeism. Studies have found it went down by over 37%. It also significantly reduces employee turnover, which drops by over 50%. And when you look at the cost of employee turnover, studies have shown that the replacement cost of an employee is about 1.5 times their annual survey. So these are significant costs, let alone the brain drain, that you can reduce through having high employee engagement. Quality in firms with high employee engagement rises by 60%. Business success, 154% more likely to be a successful business. And here's the interesting thing. At the end of the day, profitability increases by 16%. Why are we in business if not to make a profit? So often, people think, I want a large business. Well, the real key to success is having a profitable business. Because with profit, you can take the business wherever you want it to go. So understanding that being an inspiring and influential leader is going to allow you to create this in your team. If you've got a disengaged team, the first place you need to look is in the mirror. How are you as a leader actually creating that in your company? So we ask ourselves the question, what defines truly influential leaders? And you'll see on the screen here, we have six photos of what I call globally influential leaders. These are people who can be recognized through a single word, very often their surname. These are people who have a vision beyond their years, who people want to listen to, who people pay to be around. And one of the interesting things is there's five traits that really defines influential leaders. And I put it to you that you have these traits as well. The difference is, are you choosing to make the most of them? Are you choosing to bring these traits out to be able to make the most out of yourself as a leader and to be able to influence the people around you to also be the best they can be. So there are five traits of truly influential leaders that I've identified. And the first of these is a compelling vision. When we talk about compelling vision, I think it's very hard to go past John F. Kennedy. And we go back to his speech in 1962. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. Inspiring words, a great vision to send man from Earth all the way to the moon, something which had never been done, something which there was a lot of doubt about, traveling all that distance from Earth to another celestial body. But words that serve to unite a nation, 
A compelling vision is one of the key traits of an influential leader. I think when we talk about compelling vision in business these days, you can't go past Elon Musk. Elon Musk was one of the founders of PayPal. He grew the company from a startup to selling a shareholder. To continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.